I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven stacks of news. And I'm going to get to the most important starting here in a moment. But if you witnessed all the incredible duplicity that went on at the Iowa straw poll, Michelle Bachman's people, Politico's even reporting, putting up fake registration signs saying, if you want to be in the straw poll, sign up here and buy your ticket for Bachman. Bachman's rule, no vote. No Randy Travis. <laughs> uh, she bought 4,000 votes and only beat Ron Paul by 162 or 212. There's three different numbers here. The point is, is Ron Paul really won as usual. He did officially win, even though they tried to rig it in New Hampshire. Michelle Bachman is offering up country singer Randy Travis and other bands for free. As this brochure being passed out by Bachman Volunteers indicates, you must first register with her to get to see the music. <laughs> oh boy, Randy Travis at three o'clock, Richie McDonald and Tim Rushlow, Charles Billingsley. You get to hear them. If you buy your ticket, for her in the straw poll. And, you know, she's got that robot android look in her eyes. And all of this is just rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. You know, a lot of people, they send me emails, I see their comments, and they say, Alex, you say there's election fraud. Well, I don't say it's been proven in federal and state court from Ohio to Texas, from California to New York, I mean, from Chicago to Miami, all the famous cases. Executives have gone public from Diebold and other companies. A lot of times they die in a plane crash right after. Yeah, there's massive election fraud all over the country. So why then am I even covering the election? Why am I saying vote for Ron Paul? Because all the voting experts I've talked to, like Bev Harris and others, who've really been proven to be accurate so far, say that if there's a landslide because of the county and state systems, it's very hard for them to steal it. Besides, resistance is victory. We make them steal it from Ron Paul, there'll be a bigger hubbub to totally discredit these machines that are being pulled out in some areas of the country. It's a fight. It's who wants it most. And when Ron Paul gets up there in these debates and all the other eight Republicans sit there and say torture and war and secret arrest and, you know, is good. And he sits there and points out common sense reality. It's the three-year-old saying the emperor is wearing no clothes. And so resistance is victory. Don't you understand that? It's easy to go, oh, everything's destroyed, we can't win, there's nothing we can do. Ladies and gentlemen, their global warming hoax is imploding. Their carbon tax is imploding. Obama has the lowest approval rating ever recorded for a president this far into their term. I mean, how many other victories are going on? The majority of people want to abolish or audit the Federal Reserve. People now know about global government. They know about corporate cronyism, monopolyism. Mainline talk radio sound more and more like Alex Jones and Ron Paul every day. The other candidates are trying to sound like Ron Paul. Ron Paul won the stinking debate. Our ideas are winning. He won the last two CPACs in front of the Republican leadership. We're winning. They're losing. We're winning. We're winning. We're winning. Get used to it. Believe in it. Take it in your head. I'm diametrically opposed to Obama and all his socialist minions run by big banks trying to get us all dependent on their, on their plantation. But at least they admit they're dirty, low-down, rat commies. You people run around and act like you're free market and all the rest of it. But I hear mainline so-called conservative news never will utter Ron Paul's name unless it's negative. Won't tell you when he wins a straw poll or gets second place. Because they feel like they're members of the establishment. And they feel like, oh, we just sell out to the establishment. We're part of the winners. That'll protect our families. What happens when everybody sells out to the establishment? Societies collapse. You people are destroying your own future. You're not going to have to wait long now.
it's all these executives and these wannabe establishment types who are so competitive, they sell their soul out. Don't you understand? You have no future when you have this attitude. All right, let me play this CNN clip with the Politico uh, reporter on there. And the Politico reporter, again, plays it perfectly, knowing that most people like Ron Paul. He's got one of the highest approval ratings of anybody, in fact, the highest out there. He's won his congressional seat with record numbers in a very diverse district. They've rewritten many times trying to, to beat him. And this guy says, yeah, I really like Ron Paul. I shouldn't say I like him. So he puts that out there to make folks that like him feel like they're alone. He knows the majority likes Ron Paul. So he's showing why he's a slime bag reporter for Politico. Everything is crafted with what he says. Okay, these guys write their talking points up ahead of time and listen to him. He says, he says, well, I really shouldn't say this, but I like Ron Paul. And that's meant for those of you that like him to feel like, well, I better not tell anybody I like him because I'm driven by peer pressure. I'm weak. I go with the herd. Okay. Oh, but now I like this guy because I'm going to listen to him because he said he likes Ron Paul. So it has a double meaning. I like this guy. He's a friend, so I'm going to listen to him. But we're together in our weirdness. Okay. What do you have to say? And he goes on and says, well, the media ignores him even though he's winning. Won the debate, second in the straw poll. Because everybody knows he can't win. I mean, they talk to you like you're idiots. Are you really that stupid, America? Well, no, I guess you're not. He won the New Hampshire poll, straw poll. No one even covered it. He won CPAC two years in a row, and Fox News dubbed over a tape of a year before of him being booed. Oh, it was a technical difficulty later when they got caught. <laughs> It's a technical difficulty on Soviet uh, uh, fake conservative radio that Genesis carries. Because uh, I, mean, I guess it's better than uh, Fox or CNN radio news. I, maybe not. People would know immediately, at least CNN's pure evil. I mean, they all think you're dumb. Does that make you mad somebody won't tell you somebody won? Does it make you mad they've all gotten together, all these little pencil neck nobodies, and sit there for hours writing up how to manipulate you? thinking they're real smart and they're the little insiders and get to giggle and laugh at everybody. I've been at events. I've been around these pundits. They are a bunch of people who were losers their entire lives and who hate everybody and who get off on manipulating people. I'm telling you, folks, nerds are one of the most dangerous groups in this country because they end up running things, but they still hate everybody because they weren't the jocks in high school. So they play little dirty games on everybody. They use their brains to hurt people. And I'm aware of them. Okay, I'm a, I see you, you little, you little rats. Hey, here's the clip. So we are in the business of kicking candidates out of the race. May I say one, one, may I say one thing about Ron Stop Paul? Right I find it Stop right there. Stop right there. Back it up. Back it up. We're in the business of kicking people out of the race. That's the guy who's got a face made for a septic tank. He says that first. Again, just throwing the stuff at you so you feel like you're smart and parrot what they say. Stop regurgitating what they vomit in your mouth. Back to the scum. But we are in the business of kicking candidates out of the race. May I say one, one, may I say one thing about Ron Paul? I find it odd for me to be a Ron Paul supporter, but he lost to Michelle Bachman by nine tenths of one percentage point in a straw poll that doesn't supposed, isn't supposed to pick winners, but it's supposed to tell us which way the wind is blowing. That's as good as a win. So we had a tie for first. But where where is he on the morning shows this morning? Where are all the stories? analyzing what it means that Ron Paul essentially tied for first place at Ames. And what the reason that he's essentially well, being ignored is? The media doesn't believe that Ron Paul has a hoot in hell's chance of winning the Iowa caucuses, winning the Republican nomination, or winning the presidency. So we're going to well, ignore him. Go ahead, Stephanie. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, you know, Howard, because that's the one thing Donald Trump has ever been right about is that he's unelectable. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, my favorite part of the debate Thursday night is that, uh, you know, Rick Santorum broke the golden rule of Republican debates, and that's pretending Ron Paul is invisible, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, I mean, I, 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 uh, I, I think you're right. There's more media attention than there is, you know, th this is going to have to do with the actual results. Well, just to remind people of the numbers here, this great victory won by Michelle Bachman, and I'm not taking anything away from her. She got in late, and she's Hold got right a lot of momentum. Back, scumbags to the show. You got the Politico guy who doesn't sound that bad on the surface. Then they cut to the other pundits, Republican, Democrat, uh, alternative, conservative, radio news.
Donald Trump. They're all telling you Ron Paul can't win. Ron Paul can't win because he's the only candidate who is talking about real issues that would get rid of the Federal Reserve, restore the republic, get our troops home. The globalists aren't failing. Their program to take America over is going quite nicely. And here is this, this dark horse, uh, you know, this guy of old, this constitutionalist who is challenging their tyranny right at this key juncture in time. God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, has given us Ron Paul. And they've got the COINTELPRO at the grassroots attacking him, telling lies about him. I mean, they could say he's the Loch Ness Monster. No proof. They say it. It must be true. They've got the entire spectrum attacking him. Oh, and guess what Donald Trump announced last week? Looks like he's going to go ahead and run for president again. Of course, what did uh, our sources say months ago? He got in to discredit the birth certificate, and then he would come back in if it looked like Republicans might beat Obama. Or if it's not the Republican the establishment wants. And you watch. If Ron Paul ends up winning and getting the nomination, in is going to come Donald Trump with all his slick talk, and he's going to get a big group of so-called conservatives to vote, and he's going to split the race, and you're going to end up with Barack Obama in there again. That's how the system does it. That's how in the last two elections Rick Perry got elected with a minority of the votes. They always just have a bunch of people run. And that's how they're going to do it again this time. That's their plan. A casino owner who gives double the money to Democrats and you idiot conservatives were calling me months ago mad that I didn't get behind Donald Trump. I get emails like, you're an Obama operative for George Soros. You don't like Donald Trump. I get the same idiotic emails and comments now. Oh, you don't like Rick Perry, huh? George Soros paying you well. And I see this mantra, he's paid by Soros. And people are on YouTube saying, where's your proof? I don't need any. I know Jones is. Oh, yeah. That's why Soros organs attack me 24-7 and basically call for my arrest. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, Soros. Mm-hmm. Because I'm all for the New World Order and global banks and carbon taxes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. See, it's all about labels. They hope that you just get caught up in Obama and Perry and Mitt Romney. When at the end of the day, the guys are all identical. I mean, do you actually know their records? And I know as my audience, you do. But we've got to force these political prostitutes on talk radio that like to pose as constitutionalists, libertarians, and conservatives. We have got to continue to put them on the coals. They are already coming around to our way of thinking, reality, because we're putting pressure on them. Now, John, Anna, TJ, Merrill, Paul, I'm going to get to all of you. But I want to finish up this CNN clip because notice every one of them saying it's our job to knock candidates out. Ron Paul can't win. Ron Paul. And then, oh, he's winning this straw poll, second place in that straw poll, number one, number two, number three, and all the major polls. Record giving from small donors, more military contributions than all the other candidates combined on the Republican side, more than Obama. Oh, he's not popular. Rush Limbaugh says he's evil. Glenn Beck says he's evil. And see, they only say he's evil during the election cycle. For years, oh, he's great. I like him. Yeah, right when he's about to win. That guy's bad news. And they take the political heat. It hurts their audience. It hurts their listenership. But they've got to carry the water for the establishment, as Rush Limbo said. And I'm supposed to just sit here and, and, and like the flip-flopping, the duplicity. I'm not supposed to know about Rick Perry at North American Union Highways or forced inoculations of deadly shots that he knew was killing people. Or that he worked for Al Gore. I, I've seen countless comments saying I'm a liar. He didn't work for Al Gore. Dallas Morning News, Associated Press, Austin American Statesman, Rick Perry's own gubernatorial website. It's on record. He was the chairman of Al Gore's campaign in Texas. So shut up and stop calling me a liar. You are like children. Just because you say something doesn't make it reality. Just because you say Ron Paul's a kook because he's a statesman and is absolutely on target as a historian and an economist. Just because, just because you like being fooled and conned doesn't mean the rest of us want to be drug into worldwide tyranny and depression with you. Don't drag us down your rat hole with your ignorance and foolishness. 
All right, that's enough. Okay, let's finish the clip. Now listen to this simpering woman. Nobody knows who she is. Nobody cares. She's an empty suit. They stick up on TV with all the rest of the parrots to sit up there and giggle and laugh and make fun of Ron Paul, hoping their audience is shallow, hoping their audience is vapid and sophistic, hoping their audience has no gravel, hoping that you have no grit, hoping that you're this little fluttering fluttering idiot like a sponge that oh the, the the pundits up on the fancy stage with the fancy lights behind them in suits they didn't say he could win so it doesn't matter they admit he's winning 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 more than anybody else he's got the most wins he's got the highest poll numbers he can beat obama and they admit all that and then say Oh, it's only us, the media, that talk about him. They admit they're ignoring him, but then they say, in fact, we're just talking about him too much. He isn't even, he isn't even in the equation. It's like you're down to the last two laps of a NASCAR, Indianapolis 500. Ron Paul is 10 car lengths ahead. The other cars behind him are carbon tax lovers, Obama, healthcare writers, forced inoculators, Al Gore minions. I mean, look at IRS enforcers. She didn't work on computers or something at the IRS. She wasn't a secretary. She was the person that raids your house. You couldn't pay me $10 million to go into houses with people that are broke while their kids are crying and their stuff's being loaded up and their house is being taken. But that's who you, that's who they tell you you want. Oh, look, we got this little tart here for you. Michelle Bachman and her limp-wristed husband. Don't they look good? Isn't this what you want? How about Mitt Romney, some corporate whore executive socialism Obamacare lover? Yeah, that'll fix things. That's another thing. I've never brought up the fact that, you know, his Mormonism or whatever, I don't get into that. But they were attacking Ron Paul saying, are you for uh, having more than one wife? They asked him where he stood. Uh, in fact, I'm having one of those moments, those, what's it called when you've got more than uh, one wife? Uh, the uh, uh, polygamy. They asked him where he stood on polygamy, and he said, well, I'm not for it. Well, you're for states' rights. He goes, well, states aren't going to do that. This is nonsensical. Let's have a real discussion here. They were all laughing at Ron Paul because he's not for torture and the killing of Americans without warrants and just total tyranny. Ron Paul said, we're all in danger, folks. This is tyranny. And they were all laughing, all these fake tough guy men looking at him going, ha, 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 you're not for preemptive wars and torture. What a wimp. He doesn't want Americans to be able to be killed for no reason. Huh, it was great in the Soviet Union. This guy's a kook. We're a bunch of coward sellouts. Bachman, you tell him when you used to raid people's homes as their families cried. You've got little tart eyes. Tell folks how much you love them. That's right. Let me sit up here like a zombie doll. Okay, okay, I can't handle it anymore. L let's just finish the clip and I'm going to your calls. I'm going, I'm going to him. One thing Donald Trump has ever been right about is that he's unelectable. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, my favorite part of the debate Thursday night is that, uh, you know, Rick Santorum broke the golden rule of Republican debates, and that's pretending Ron Paul is invisible. <laughs> you know? So, it I mean, right I, there. I, I, uh... He broke the cardinal rule. Pretending that Ron Paul's invisible. They, when you look in these zombies' eyes, every one of them is electrified and scared. There's never been any real opposition. Not even Barry Goldwater. He, he, he wasn't a bad guy, but he was establishment. There's never been anybody like Ron Paul. 75 years old, works 18 hours a day, dedicated, just so good. God's given us a choice right now. Will he fix everything? No. But it's a step in the right direction. And they sit up there scared to death from every angle, attacking him, treating you like you're idiots, saying he can't win. <laughs> oh, Palente broke the cardinal rule of pretending Ron Paul didn't exist. Did you hear that crowd? You little prostitute. Did you hear that crowd? They uh, Go watch the debate just like you did. You're there scared of them. You're there hoping that crowd's weak-minded and hoping that you can. And you know what? You, you might succeed. Ron Paul might not win or, or, or the voting machines will kick in and cheat him. But don't worry, we're going to remember all of you prostitutes. It's already come out the federal government pays most of you on top of your jobs in the media with banker bailout money. And, and that's called aiding and abetting a foreign banking power that took over our country. And you people, well, you know what happened after we won the war in 1789? You know what happened? You are traitors and you're going to be told, get out of this country. 
You understand? And I'm serious. You people, could you believe we'd be about to be able to audit and get rid of the Federal Reserve? We're going. Just because Rick Perry sits up there in a suit and knowingly tells people to take a vaccine that he knows kills them in many cases and maims people doesn't mean it's okay. Just because they take secret money under the table from the government, MSNBC, CNN, you name it, doesn't mean that that's not super creepy and, 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 and illegal as the Congressional Budget Office found six years ago. The only way they're getting away with all this is payoffs, folks. Those are enemy banker operatives hitting you hard. Finish up with them. We got the clip, the rest of it? I, I think you're right. There's more media attention than there is, you know, th this is going to have to do with the actual results. Well, just to remind people of the numbers here, this great victory won by Michelle Bachman, and I'm not taking anything away from her. She got in late and she's got a lot of momentum, but she got 4,000. 823 votes. Ron Paul got a couple hundred less, as you say, Roger. Palenti with 2,293. Uh, Jackie Kucin, as you mentioned earlier, Texas Governor Rick Perry. The media doesn't believe that Ron pause. Paul has a hoot in hell. Hit pause on the video because it's got the headline I wanted to show, folks. Michelle Bachman wins Ames straw poll. Tim Palenti gets third. There's Politico on your screen if you're a prisonplanet.tv viewer. An example of hundreds of articles I saw where they wouldn't even mention Ron Paul, Politico, Fox. I saw it everywhere. Why are they all scared? Because he is holy water to these vampires. They, want, they are scared, scared, scared. Not because he can't win, because he's the only one that can win. And the only one, if he does win, that could do anything about where we're at. He, he has given us the prognosis as a doctor of exactly the diagnosis of exactly what we have, he's got the cure. It's called the republic. It's called liberty. It's called self-sufficiency. It's called kicking the banksters out. And so, of course, they're all attacking him. I don't believe in God. I know God is real. I know there's this spiritual force of goodness and creation in the universe. And I can feel God. And I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for God. And I'm going to tell you something right now. I've studied history and I've studied providence. This may be one of the last chances the republic's being given. You notice right as we implode, right as we fall to the banksters, this little humble doctor who grew up milking cows, his whole career coming towards this final goal. That's why he's retiring after this, win, lose, or draw. He knows that as well. This little humble doctor who knows the problems, who will stay the course. People say, well, if he gets elected, They'll just assassinate him. Do you know what that'll do if they assassinate Ron Paul? They can't win if Ron Paul gets in there. And that's why they're so scared of him right now. God's giving us a chance right now to make the right decision.